Carol here. Warm welcome to my craft room. This is my Elderis Creative Design Team project using the new summer release. And I'm also going to be using the Karen Pro markers that I got at the shop. And this is the wonderful, uh, let's see, it's called Watermark. It's a, instead of using the Versamark, we call it uh, watermark at LDRS created. There it is, and it's just clear ink, clear sticky ink, so that you can apply your embossing powder. Now, this tutorial, along with my other card tutorial, these slimline cards, would have been up yesterday. Oh, yes, let me share. I put baby powder on this, and this is that gorgeous Stonehenge Aqua Press black 140 pound watercolor paper. Remember I got this in the haul. I love it. And I made sure I had plenty of baby powder on here before I put the gold embossing uh, powder, which is detailed. If you're new to stamping, always remember to buy your embossing powder, unless it's mixed media, get it in detail. Because when you're doing sentiments and fine, let's say artistry, you are going to appreciate the powder being fine and getting in all the nice sticky parts of the stamps. Now, I would have had this up yesterday, my friends, but we have had extreme heat and up the street from us, one of the big trees fell over and knocked our power out, our hydro. So for the day, I didn't have Wi-Fi and I didn't have my wonderful fiber optic cable <laughs> either. That runs down our street, the fiber optic cable. And uh, yeah, so this put me a day behind. So I apologize for that. It was out of my control. But I do have um, Wi-Fi now. I do have some projects going up one after another. This slimline die with the LDRS Creative Release, you're going to love it. I am working on the cards to put them into my recipe book that I am dedicating to the LDRS Creative Release. So using the Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press 140 pound paper here, it looks gorgeous when you use anything fluorescent on it. So that's why I used the gold to emboss, and I also used the wonderful uh, Perfect Pearls. I painted each one of these fish that is the stencil that you get. This came out of the edit. For some reason, when I was um, working with my camcorder, this was erased. All I did was... I put down the embossing folder and I just in the holes I took each color each individual color it took me some time but I used my perfect pearls and I have perfect pearls and I also have pearlux and I just set them all out and then I wet each one of them so I had a ton of colors to color in the separate fish that you see to the left it's oh so pretty and this paper's oh so beautiful and the release is fantastic my friends i'll leave the links to everything as i have been doing since the, i began july 1st putting up tutorials for the release so um it's not midnight it's only uh 10 after 9. <laughs> I thought I better get going on the voiceover so I can get this part up because I am going to show you some envelopes that I made. Now here's the die to these cute little mermaids and I'm telling you the Karen, I like to call them Corinne for some reason, the Karen markers I think and I have used a lot of watercolor markers. I have them are the best markers I have used to date. You can take one marker, my friends, and that, I think that's why they're sold out. All but the 26 uh, pen set are sold out over at um, the shop 
at uh, LDRS Creative, but Angie is, I think, working on getting more in. I managed to get the 60 set, so I was really thankful for that because I love them. I, I'm not kidding. I had so much fun. You could take one marker and say it's a yellow, you're doing the hair, and you will be able to get your mid tone, your light tone, and your dark tone with one marker. That's how pigmented these beautiful watercolors are. I love the tip that's on them, just everything about it. So let me move on. <laughs> you know how crazy I get when I like something. So here we go. I cut it out with the uh, beautiful slimline corner scallop die. Uh, the outside and the inside, obviously, so that I had these fish like this. And then I'm going to take out my Perlex and my Perfect Pearls and I'm going to use the dry method where I am just putting it on. I'm not using any water. They're just going to be uh, put on with like a makeup sponge brush. I think that's what it is that I'm using. And then I apply it down Then I take a cheek brush that I got at my dollar store when nothing's a dollar. And one is super, super soft. And the other one is a little bit more coarse. Still soft, but just a tad more coarse so that I can get some of the powder off. And uh, here I'm just going to create the actual uh, background. This is not the card base. The card base will be white. And I'll show you why I make a white card base in just a minute. And please ignore all these measurements. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. I think I was going to make a card with this color, you know, the card, actual card base, but I ended up not doing that for some strange reason. I skipped it and uh, I made two cards uh, out of this colored paper and you'll see in a second. I'm going to try and hide the second card because that's the next video. But I had so much fun. I was going to do a four-sided card on this. It started out to be a four-sided card. But there was just too much in it. Too much goodness. It would have been like three hours long. I could not have done the edit down enough to get it all in a reasonable viewing time. So I made two cards out of uh, this one colored paper. And I'll move on. I think you do get a little peek at, at one of them, but I have some cards coming up I think you're really going to enjoy. I tried to use all different mediums for you, coloring mediums. I did not stick to just like say Copics or a certain pencil. I changed up every time. So here I wanted to show you what it's like to color the dry method with Perfect Pearls and the wet method. Now here, this is hysterical. This is a three inch across. Let me just get it out here. Just want to be sure because I tried to put this outer edge through it. And while I'm yakking with you here, it's uh, three and a, no, it's about three and a quarter inches, I think here. Yes, one, two, three and a quarter let's say three inches and I tried to squish this in now I did okay because I can always put liquid glue and that's what I did on the pieces parts that didn't make the Xyron I tell you once you start seeing that it's going uh, cattywampus on you you start to panic <laughs> and yes but I did get some wonderful Xyron sticky on there and I love using the Xyron, you know that. And, and that was going in whether it was a 2-inch Xyron or a 10-inch Xyron. I wanted, there's no going back, right? There's no going back. You just have to pull it forward and say, yep, that's it. Just say that's it. <laughs> okay, so let's get going here. I used this beautiful Pacific Blue cardstock. It's nice and thick. I I can't even remember. It's been so long ago. All my cardstock is, colored cardstock is ancient, but I pulled this color out. I really liked it. It's kind of like a Stonehenge blue. 
it's really pretty. And uh, yeah, look at all these score marks, please. Just ignore them. The card is, like the card base of this slimline card, when you put it on the white cardstock, is going to be eight and a half by three and three quarters. That's the card size. And then I'll show you how to make a simplistic envelope to put it in. It's not going to be a fancy, fancy schmancy. On the next tutorial will be a fancy schmancy envelope. But on this one, because we're 45 minutes long on this tutorial, I decided to stop when I finish the voiceover and I will um, do an envelope and then put it quickly on for you. And then tonight, probably midnight, I will do the edit for the envelope. So let's carry on, my friends. So here we go. This is the makeup applicator I found while cleaning up my island and organizing my stuff. It's amazing what you find, right? And I'm just applying the different color blues in the background because I'm thinking ocean, I'm thinking blue, and I'm thinking pretty. So let's get it on there and then we're going to take our poofy cheek brush and just kind of mix it all up there. I am going to put a bit of red in there. I think it looks really nice in the background. And I'll deepen it where I think it should have a little bit more because when you start taking it off, if you add any pressure to Perfect Pearls, it's going to, um, you know, it's going to flick off of the page. But I have to say that you can set your page very easily but with water. Just put it in a misty little container, little squirt bottle where the water... Oh, excuse me, I'm, I'm squirting here. <laughs> if he doesn't come when I'm cutting something, he needs to be cooled off because it's so hot out there. He does need this. Um, so what I did is I just took the Tim Holtz Mister and this will set your perfect pearls. Water sets it or hairspray, either or. And I took out my um, shimmer, my shimmer, uh, it's Frost Shimmer Spritz. And it's by Imagine Crafts. I took that because I wanted to get that uh, real shiny look. But I didn't have a spare little bottle to put the perfect pearls in. If you put the white iridescent perfect pearls with water in a spray bottle, you get this exact uh, shimmer that I'm getting by using an actual uh, product, you know. So anyway, I knew I was going to use a white base, so I went around the edges with my white pen and made some dot marks. I really love that look, don't you? And I just used the Signal Broad white gel pen and it's so pretty just keep going over all of your fish it doesn't matter um, and I have to tell you something I enjoyed this card and the next card so much that's going up for the release I just um, you know I love detail that's probably uh, one of the things why my videos are so long because I keep adding little things and I keep thinking up little things to add to it to my cards. Now, they don't have to be perfect cards. Of course not. I couldn't do that if I tried. I just like to add a lot of stuff <laughs> like I'm doing right now. I'm going to start the pen on my hand. I went around some of the fish just to have them stand out especially the ones where the perfect pearls got got underneath the stencil as you see the blue one there in the middle it worked its way underneath and uh, which means you know it's got uh, that wet look to it like it's escaped you know the colors escaped on me so I just made bigger fish and I put fins on them I did whatever I had to to make them look a little bit realistic here. And look at that blob up at the top there, above that green one. I mean, that really escaped, didn't it? And uh, yeah, so anyway, this is so much fun. And look at the shimmer. I mean, perfect pearls. I always forget, and they're, you know, sitting in a nice container not far from me, and I always forget to use them. 
I don't know why they're they're just pretty. And if you have to use something that's iridescent, I mean, what's not to love about, you know, Perlex or Perfect Pearls to color with? It's wonderful. And this Stonehenge, hinge, no, Stonehenge, yes, 140 pound watercolor is wonderful. Now I took out these markers. These are super duper fine markers that I got at BD's, my stationery store. But you know what? Um, the Perfect Pearls, it just wasn't, I don't know, it just didn't work with it. It wasn't um, thick enough to add to uh, the actual, I don't know, design of it. So I just went to my gold, because I do have gold in there, to the other ones. I didn't want to do all the fish white. That's what I'm trying to say. So I took out some of my Signo gold pens because signal pens come in more than just white they come in gold they come in silver and they come in the white so and i get these at a stationery store and i'm just making some extra fish just a few if i feel like it you know needs a little bit more bulk i'll add a little bit of design to the fish uh, for that something something because i am you know I am going to cover some of this up, and I don't know for now which ones I'm going to cover up with the uh, mermaids. So I just thought, okay, Carol, just, you know, design a few of them. Put some stripes and some other things on there. And then, of course, I had to flick some white paint on there. See that? I just put that flicking uh, shimmer that I had, I just unscrewed the bottle and flicked some of it out there. Look at that one big blob. That was a good one. I didn't even think I, co I covered all that up. And there's some of the stamps. I mean, there's 14 dies in this. It's just amazing. And wait till you see how I use the inside dies on this. I think you're gonna want to get this slimline die. It's gorgeous. Uh, so I didn't know, you know, another thing I was thinking of, my friends, is whether I should do the card uh, vertical, opposed to horizontal, obviously. And here I'm thinking of, uh, I was going to do a tiny shaker, you know, just put a little shaker element with some pieces, bits that match the color in the fish. You could do that if you wanted to, but um, because of the design I'm going to do on the inside of this card I, I didn't do that and here's my pokey tool my hygiene pokey tools <laughs> my dental assistant tray that's what I'll call them pokey tools so here I'm trying to see why is my pen not working it's giving me a little bit of problems here so I switch over to my white and this is just a normal gel pen this is not um, my Signo. It's a gel pen. And then I thought, oh my, that's not working. So let me put some glitter on it with the glitter pens. I can't remember what these ones are called. I think I have one close to me. It is the Ziggs, of course, the Winkastella. I haven't used those in a while. So I put a nice uh, squeeze of it on my nice uh, tin my new tin uh, mat I have there and I'm going to go around it and then I thought oh I love this look on here so I did the whole thing I did the whole thing and this is the turn my friends this is where I turned around I poured out my perfect pearls on here and then I sprayed it with water because it doesn't matter if anything gets on the lower section because I'm going to cover it with the other part but look at the shimmer on this cardstock and my friends this cardstock is not uh, watercolor I have to ease up on this I didn't even think it's just normal probably 80 pound paper but I got into this uh, mode of loving the the shine you know the shimmer of this card so I went crazy and I was going to use it for the back of this card. Like I said, I started designing to make it, there it is, the shimmer spray, but you just need to use the perfect pearls with water 
and put it in a little spritzer bottle and it will look just like this. You know, you don't have to buy something extra. But I bought this so long ago. I think you were with me, Janet, at Sharon's store in Buffalo. And we bought up the spritzes in gold, silver, and white. I remember that like it was yesterday. So here we go. I'm going to dry it with my heat tool. And you know what else I did? I ended up cleaning my heat tool. It looks brand new. If you're designing and doing mixed media, your heat gun can get a little messy. Now, I took my um, cutting knives and I gently got all of the paint and the glue and the little spots I had on it. Now it looks like I went out and bought a new one. I just love it. You know, because because Milwaukee heat tools are not cheap. So you want to keep them nice. Uh, I do. A lot of people don't care whether their stuff gets, you know, all uh, yuckied up. If they're, you know, well, of course, because then it looks like you really do craft. <laughs> I don't, my tools look like I don't do anything. I just sit around and yak. That's all I do. And some would say that's so true, right? So here we are here. Look at these little mermaids here. I put the scales on their mermaid bodies with my Signo pen and then I got that little gel pen. Um, oh, this is my, I think this is Tim Holtz glitter. Uh, it's like Perfect Pearls, but it's chunkier. I, I have a ton of colors of this. I don't know what it's called and I'm not getting off my chair, but uh, it sure is pretty. And I wanted to keep it in the silver gold and rose gold copper colors on my mermaids here. I didn't color in the faces except for to do the eyes. Uh, I didn't like them like just staring at me like that, like round eyes. I wanted to put some actual eyeballs in there and some eyelashes. So I think I did this on these ones. And I went right directly with my water brush, right dipping it into the perfect pearls. Isn't that a gorgeous red? Actually, it's like a a hot pink fuchsia. It's beautiful. It looks beautiful on the hair. And uh, this is my little gel pens. I'm going to tell you which one this is because I love it. Um, uh, let's see. It's a jelly roll pen. That's what it is. Sakura jelly roll pen. And it's the number, let me see, 700. I don't see anything else on there, but does this ever sparkle? I've never seen anything like it. And I never grab for my Jelly Roll pens. I'm going to now. Wow, they're wonderful. So here we are. I get out my new hot glue gun. And I don't know why. I Because I put away my old one. That's why I'm using this one. And I put the gold glue sticks in there. So from the side, you could see the gold. See? It's gold glue. Isn't that fantabulous? I love it. So I just thought I want to raise them up a little bit, but I didn't want to raise them up a ton. Just a tad, not a ton. There you go. And the shimmer on this, ugh. And you could get this with watercolor black paper, my friends. You don't need the Stonehenge paper. I was just experimenting with it. And I love this release. May I say it again, this release, when you go to the link, this, everything about it, I mean, you get one slim line set that has 14 different dyes in it. That's unbelievable. And wait till you see what each one of these little die cuts can do. I'm going to show you on the inside. I'm going to start with this card and show you all the cutesy wootsy ideas I had for creating new ideas with the stamps that come in the collection. You know I like to have an extra score mark on the spine of my card so that I have a little bit of space because I am going to do three little elements on the inside of the card. I end up doing the front and the inside but I do decorate the back portion and the upper portion of the card just to give it something pretty 
and uh, that the cardstock is all iridescent. I used some bridal sparkle paper to get that effect as I have with the shimmer and the perfect pearls. And I am going with the gold, so I got out the gold paper, and here I am. Uh, yes, you could see, it's just like a mirror. That's sometimes not a good thing. But yeah, I'm putting the gold, I just want a tiny little strip going around all the edges of the gold. Now, if I was not in such a hurry here, I would have cut out the guts of the inside because I'm only wanting to get a tiny little strip around the edges and I would have saved on the paper, but it didn't matter to me uh, here. I just, uh, I knew I was using a thinner 80 pound cardstock with this one right here with the wedding paper. And I knew with the lightweight gold paper, this isn't thick, it's lightweight, that you would have seen all of the glue marks in that if I had have taken any of the gut parts out. So by leaving them in and leaving it flat, it dried beautifully. And isn't that gorgeous? You have that, uh, I just know it as wedding card paper. It has the really nice shine to it and I just love it. So we'll put some liquid glue around the edges of my ATG gun and it just gave me exactly what I wanted for the back portion of this card. And I have a stamp that says created especially for you by Carol Held and I stamped that onto a punch tag and put it on the back. So I can do any color. Just stamp it and I'll do that before I mail this card out. Um, so here we go. I need another piece for the inside and this is where my friends the fun began. Oh I enjoyed these slimline cards. Can I say it again? I know I get super excited when I love something. I just can't help it and I love dyes. I love creating with dyes and um, yeah this release is fabulous. Once and these cards are going inside the uh, the recipe book right so they're not going I'm not going to be giving them away as separate cards they're actually going to be put in pockets inside the recipe book and I'm going to put the recipe book together at the end and that way when I use every uh, stamp and die from this release the recipe book will be complete and I'll be happy yes <laughs> I always like to make that a goal to use one project but use up every stamp and dice that I get uh, as uh, being a design team member, you know, and Angie's very, very giving, and I just really appreciate it, and I love, um, I just, I love designing, and I, I hope that you go over and check out all the products that are over on LDRS Creative. You know I keep the link in the description box. I also have all the links over on my blog for you of everything I use. So here's what I did. I took the square out of the actual die set. It's the outside square. And I don't even know if it intentionally only cuts three ways around, you know, three cu cuts. But I noticed that I could keep the top portion in. Uh, I'm going to have to cut one because they all were like this. I don't know if this die is an actual flip flap you know that it's a flap that flips <laughs> I don't know I have to go and look at that isn't that crazy all I did was I just didn't add pressure when going through my little die cutting machine I used my small mini die cutting machine you know my hand cranky one so yeah I was cranky but my machine this wasn't cranky no so what I did was I cut I die cut a black and I die cut an, a gold and uh, I put the gold piece I cut all the square out and put it 
so that you could see gold when it flipped up. And you'll see that when I uh, end up creating. And I put a piece of scotch tape just on the top part that has the score mark in it. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at the gold. I do the center one in gold with the gold paper. See that there? And it is the middle square, the outside scallop square. That's what I used. And I mean, my friends, you're getting 12 smaller dies. So you have 14 dies all together, but you get 12 small ones. I mean, that's super. Oh, before I get too excited and my blood pressure goes up off the wall, let me stop here and get some watercolor white paper. And we're going to make uh, the mermaids, but I only want their heads because when those flaps open up, my flips, my flip flops, not flip flops, but my flip flops, when they open up, I want you to be able to see the mermaids again, but I want you to be able to see them in white cardstock instead of the black. So this is what I did. I, I did the gold. Yes, I knew I had the gold on here. I used the watermark and then I put the die down. So you are going to see the die that I used for my flip flap. And uh, after I heat set it, make sure I heat set it, then uh, because I've done that before, I get so excited when I'm creating, I forget to heat set it and then, you know, I'm doing it again. And you can see on the paper that I'm creating on, all the flex in it. That's why I call it wedding paper. Um, it comes with that shine and a little bit of flex in it. I love it. So here we go. Put the die down, get a pencil, and then draw out where you need to color. That way you don't waste your ink, you don't waste your time, and you just enjoy the smaller process of coloring, which is nice. And here we go. Let me show you these Karen markers. Like I said, have a watercolor brush on hand, take one color, and that one color is going to give you three tones, a mid-tone, a light, and a dark, all in one, just with one marker. That's the Karen markers, that's how deeply pigmented they are. They're intense, and that tip, it's not like working with a water brush where it bends, it's thick. It reminds me of the Zig, of my Zig uh, art. Oh, I can't remember the name of them. Um, it's not rubber though. I don't know, they're just very firm. Let me just say that. You can tell when I'm using it here. And I will go to all the corners of the hair or the face. Just do inside the corners and then push the watercolor out with your pen. Just push it out with your pen and look at how much fun you're having. You look like you've actually taken time to use three markers to get all of your, you know, your uh, light, dark, and mid-tone. Trying to find the right words. All it is is you want a light, medium, and dark. And I achieved that with one marker. And then if you don't if it dries lighter than you want, just go back and add some more of the watercolor. It's just great. I had a blast coloring with this. And if you struggle with skin tones, you're going to love these pens, my friends. You will. It uh, really does spread well. And you can see that just by your tummy there, how the dark goes to light without any complications. It's just amazing. And may I say, as I'm doing my voiceover, I want to thank everybody that leaves me such wonderful, encouraging, inspiring, all the wonderful words that I can't even possibly think of, that you encourage me and you inspire me by leaving comments. And you also help my channel when you give me a thumbs up. Thank you so much. It helps with that algorithm thing where it puts me in a higher position to be seen on YouTube by just giving me a thumbs up and I want to thank you for that. Um, just right now while I'm thinking about it, I do want to thank you and I look forward to releasing all week 
some wonderful card ideas with uh, for well not with but for my recipe book and uh, yeah I know everybody that has left me a comment is enjoying it so thank you so much and if you don't leave me a com you know a comment that's okay too because I know you're watching by how many views I get and I want to thank you as well so let's go we're working I'm kind of working upside down there because the way I stamped it but look at the color come out of these Karen pens isn't it crazy beautiful I think that's why I think Angie said like she had to restock these like three times because people were just buying them up and I think Somebody told me that ordered these. A lot of my viewers order from LDRS Creative, and they said that uh, they are the um, l the most well, the least expensive of all of the Karen markers that you can order online. Angie has them at the best price ever, and I can believe that. She really does try to keep all of her prices down and affordable for crafters and to creators like you and I. Here I'm just putting some gray Karen marker in here because I wanted to intensify the Jelly Roll, the jelly roll uh, Sparkle Glitter Pen. And then to the corners I added a little bit of that pink color that I had in her hair just to add a little bit of depth to it. So you've got the gray, the pink in the corners, and then take out your jelly roll. I'm just trying to dry it because I know I'm going to use the jelly roll. I don't want it to be white when I cut it out. I want it to be all white. I just don't want it to be all white. You know what I mean? You can see the grain on the paper. I use the opposite side. I use the smooth grain. I hope I don't sound like I'm going too fast in the voiceover here. I'm just trying to get this portion up uh, before midnight. <laughs> yeah, it's 10 o'clock now because I'm going to stop. When I get this done, I'm going to make an envelope for you and I'm going to put it on this tutorial so I can just slide this gorgeous card into an envelope for you and you can see how easy peasy it is to make an envelope it might not be as fancy as I would like but it is an envelope that you can put in the mail or in my case put it inside the recipe book so thank you so much now let's go back and look at this gorgeous jelly roll this the glitter and sparkle in these pans are amazing and if you put color underneath before you have the jelly roll. It's fabulous. So here we go. I die cut each one of them. Uh, well, I die cut each one of these dies that's down. And then I just cut with my scissors, like my large fabric scissors that I shouldn't be using. I'm just putting glue on them. I Because it has a long blade, I just cut the squares off. I put them underneath here. So each one of the mermaids were peeking out of this die. And whether or not this is a flip, I'm going to have to check that out. It is now. And then the tape that I use so it doesn't break off when I put the score mark in, I just covered with the gold. Yes, I just checked out the die and it's actually supposed to cut on all four sides. But... Uh, like I said, if it happens to release itself, just take some tape and put one portion, whichever way, if you want it vertically to flip or horizontally to flip up or to flip to the side, just glue it back on and then put some matching colored paper over top and it is as cute as can be. What I thought of was just taking the paper, cutting out two starfish and a shell. Uh, it's so cute. And another thing, I went to my stash. I haven't used my sequins in a long time on my tutorials, so I got out a variety of colors. And I tried to match them up as close as I could 
to the images that I colored on the inside of the flip-flops, flip-flops, and the mermaids on the inside. So I thought that was kind of fun. I just set them underneath. You can see my light in the last two left um, lids, can't you? All the little white twinkle lights in there. I didn't notice that before. But uh, here you go. We're going to take my uh, pick stick and if you find your pick stick doesn't have the stick that you once had, just take some orthodontic wax and put it on the end. Just wrap it around and you will have sticky forever. Yes. You can just keep a nice little stick of orthodontic wax on hand and every time your pick stick or whatever stick you use, you can use anything, the end of a paintbrush, it will pick up your sequins nicely. So there you have it, a little beach seaside scene right on the corners of, or right on the inside of your scallop square. Well, I did create the envelope to match this card, but it's 20 after 1 in the morning, so I think I will put it on the next tutorial tomorrow when I show you the next slimline card that's going to go in our recipe book. So thank you so much. Have yourself a blessed week. Please enjoy the pictures of the envelope with the LDRS Creative Card, and I can't wait to share more cards with you. See you later, everybody. Take care.